Your planet render isn't getting the likes you want. That's because you're missing essential ingredients in your planet shading and have no idea. I'm going to show you three techniques that will quickly improve your atmosphere shading. As always, the last one is often overlooked, but super important. I've already done videos on making planets, so if you need to know how to add a sphere to your scene and add in a sunlight, you can go and watch those videos. The first thing that we're obviously going to need is some kind of shading for our actual planet. I am unsurprisingly going to be using some planet textures from my pack, so you can go ahead and get those if you're interested. If you want to fix some of this ugly normal shading at the terminator line that just happens because cycles is a little bit funny, you can go to your object settings, open up shading, and just adjust the shading offset a little bit until it looks more natural. Now we'll just turn on our atmosphere object, which is just another round cube. And we're going to delete the principal BSDF and we're going to add in a volume scatter node. Blender 4.3 brought some new scattering phase functions. In other words, just some fancy new scattering types. Let's just go ahead and change this to Rayleigh. I'm not actually entirely sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. So we are immediately going to add in a black body node. The black body node for now is going to be sort of the backbone of the color for our planet's atmosphere. We'll just change this to 15,000. Then I'll hit shift A, search for hue saturation value, and set the saturation to something like one and a half. And I've got a decent and pretty accurate color selected for our planet's atmosphere. Now, the first problem with this atmosphere is that we've got no fall off. If we look here at our reference images, and every render should start out with reference images, you can see that the sky, that Earth's atmosphere, has a pretty smooth looking gradient fall off in all of these pictures we can see. The way that we're going to do that is using a little bit of math. Now I don't want you to be intimidated, it's going to be super super easy. So we're going to start out by adding a geometry node. And we're going to steal this position output and we're going to plug that into the density. Now immediately it hasn't worked right. And that's okay, because we need to now add a vector math node. Set that to distance, plug that, back in, plug that back into the density, and it still looks basically like it did before. The reason for that is that actually the core on the inside of the planet, at the very, very center, the density is zero. But the density gets increasingly higher the farther away from the center of our planet we move. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a map range node. And what we're going to do with this is this from minimum value is going to become the new height of our atmosphere. So if we just take this and change it to 1.01, .01, we can see that we've now got this really tight atmosphere. And not only is it tight, it's now a smooth gradient. It looks pretty even still, but this is in fact a smooth gradient. Now the next thing that we want to do is thicken up the atmosphere and adjust the slope a little bit. So we'll just add in a math node, set that to multiply, and we'll just increase this value to something like 15. Here we're going to duplicate this multiply node, place it before, and set it to power. And you can see that instantly just by increasing the power and the multiply, we're getting a thick atmosphere fall off. The second step is layers. Earlier I said that the atmosphere is a nice smooth gradient. I kind of lied to you. If we look at some images here, we can see that the atmosphere actually has a couple of different blocks representing these different layers, these different layers in the sky. And if we look really closely, you can actually see a little break here called the stratopause. Now we're not going to be concerned with making fully accurate atmosphere layers for Earth's atmosphere. But we're going to try to replicate an effect pretty similar to this. We're going to try to get some layers on our atmosphere and it's going to add a whole lot more detail. Maybe we'll just group all of these together. Here's a little trick we can actually do. If we want only the values we want to use exposed, if we take a value node and we plug this into the from minimum value, then we select our map range and press control H. Now we can delete that value. We don't need it anymore. We've hidden everything except for that from minimum value. So if you ever want to adjust the height of the atmosphere, you know exactly which value to use. So that's pretty handy. Now for our layers effect, we'll just move that to the side to give us some space. We're going to replicate this with the Voronoi texture. You could really use any texture you wanted to, but I've just decided to use the Voronoi texture because I felt like it. And what we're just going to do is we're going to take straight out of the map range node. We're going to take the result and plug it into the vector of our Voronoi texture. And we're going to plug that into our density so that we can preview it. Now to really be able to see what's going on, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a math node. And we're going to set it to power and we'll just increase this. And then we'll just add a multiply right afterwards and increase that. And we're just going until you can sort of see some visible layers here. 
and then we'll set this to a 40 texture that way we can manipulate this w value in other words basically the seed we'll see if we can get something that's just a little bit more similar to the reference that's looking pretty decent then we'll just duplicate our multiply node and we're going to take our fall off and we're going to plug it right in and immediately we're going to see while these layers are maybe a little bit too intense we are getting the effect of atmosphere layers that's looking great now what we can do if we want to bring down the intensity of that effect a little is we can add in a mix node right here and we'll just plug our uh, layers into the b and then we'll take the value from our regular fall off and plug it into the a input this way this is acting like a factor we can say zero for no layers and one for 100 percent layers mix so we can just turn that down to like 0.5 Little trick, if we press Control B, we can box select an area of the render view and just preview that box and it will render a whole lot faster since it's this tiny window. Let's bring that factor all the way back up and mess with this until we get a spread of layers that we kind of like. Maybe we want to increase the saturation of the atmosphere just a little. We're going to go over to the render tab really quick actually. Open up volumes and set viewport step rate to 0.1. Let's stop for one second because I just want to talk really quickly about my planet textures that I teased at the beginning of the video. Right now we're using one of the desert planets, but maybe we want to go for a little bit of a different vibe. Here's the lava planet from that same texture pack. Here's an example of one of the alien planets that also has some cool emissive textures. Every texture set also comes with a displacement texture so you can get real physical displacement for even more detailed planet renders. Every planet material, in addition to being completely unique, is based on real scans of real planets from our solar system, which breathe in them a kind of life and detail that you just don't get with completely procedural textures. I'm going to stick with the desert texture for the rest of this tutorial, but if you want to check out my planet textures, you can go to the link in the description or click the button on screen to take your planet renders to the next level right now. We're going to move on to our third step. So what I'm going to do, set the atmosphere to bounds and the clouds to bounds. Then we're going to hold down Alt and middle click on a point on our surface, maybe right there. And we're just going to zoom all the way. And we're actually going to open the end panel and change our clip start to something really insane. We're just going to get right down to the surface of our planet here. So if we're sitting on the surface of our planet, looking up into the sky that we've created, and we can see the sun, the third thing that we have to get down is called me scattering. I think it's pronounced me scattering. It's this little halo that appears around the sun that is caused by little droplets of water in Earth's atmosphere, scattering the light a little bit more directly. If we just control shift D, this volume scatter, and change it from Rayleigh to me, we're gonna go over to our exposure and bring it down. We can see that we're immediately getting that halo. This is perfect. Now it's a little bit too tight, I think, so I'm gonna bring down the, the diameter. Right now about 10, we might mess with this a little bit later. And then we're just gonna add in a mix shader. And we'll just play with a factor that makes sense. And if we select our sun, double tap R, and just drop it below the horizon line, you can see we're getting a bit of that halo just above the horizon. We're not perfect on our atmosphere yet, but this is getting pretty close. Control Alt B to undo that. Now what you're going to immediately notice is that the atmosphere appears a lot darker from space when you're looking at the planet head on. But when we spin around and look in the direction of the sun, we're going to see that the atmosphere thickens up a whole lot. We're getting a much brighter effect. This is exactly the kind of thing that we're looking for. But right now it's perhaps a little bit too intense. So let's start playing with our settings. We're also at this point going to realize that our power and multiply here and our fall off is not intense enough. So we're going to bring up the power by probably a lot and then multiply it by a lot. We're going to add in another multiply node. Just we have like kind of master multiplication master intensity over the entire atmosphere so here you can see that we're getting back to kind of a normalized brightness on the atmosphere but again it's getting really nice and thick when we preview it in the direction of the sun i'm just going to take the diameter of the value on the me scattering and we're going to bring it down by a lot i'm going to bring it down to like three which is pretty small and arguably not 100 percent accurate but it's going to bring us more to the look that i want the way to know whether your sky shading is accurate or not is if it actually looks like a sky from the ground. So we'll just pop back down onto the ground and then we'll just play around with these falloff settings until we get more of this dark line along the bottom. Now if we go back out to space, we're really starting to get some of that look that we want. Now the one last touch that I'm going to add on top of all of this is that the way that me and Rayleigh scattering mixes 
is according to altitude. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna add in one more math node, set it to power. We're gonna plug this gradient map range into it. And then we're gonna plug that into the factor of our mix shader here. And zooming back out to space, we're just kind of going to eyeball it. Like I said, we're not going for something scientific for this. We're just going to go just until we see a little bit of that brightness return back to the atmosphere. And that's how we know we're kind of in a good spot with it. But yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now, congratulations. You have just made a much more realistic, much more accurate, much more robust sky shader. 